Good morning and welcome to the Wednesday morning meditations. Thank you for joining me live or recorded. All of the previous recordings are at soundandlighthealingarts.com. So I'm Jan Jorgensen and I do these meditations every week. Why? Because it helps me with my own uh, it helps me with my own attitude adjustment, and it helps me, okay, hold on here one second. I'm going to uh, pin myself, good morning. Okay, so we're, uh, we're recording, and welcome to today's meditation. Uh, so glad you're here today. I picked a card, and the card is Healing the Emotional Body. And for some reason, I always pick the card that someone, someone on the call or later needs to have that message. And so this is something that I've been working with uh, powerfully, and it's uh, my emotional body talking about our emotional bodies because we're annoyed that something isn't doing in the world what we want it to do, what we need it to do. And we are emotionally attached to it doing, doing something or some person being or doing something according to our needs. Think about that. Think about how opposite that is from being freed and then attached and out of duality. It's like a stickiness that we humans have. I mean, it's great to have expectations and you have to have boundaries with people. But if we're constantly going around saying, that's not perfect, that's not how I want it, or look how you behave, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. it's exhausting. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like the um, monitor. It's like the, um, you know, police for behavior and perfection all the time. So at some point, we have to learn some tools and skills and not let everything go. It's, it's not letting go of caring, but it's letting go of the festering and the stress and the layering of repressed emotions that event eventually uh, make us depressed or explode. So, so I don't know if that's good news or not, but eventually you're going to let it out or you're going to be so depressed your life doesn't work and you'll seek help. So the today's card is healing the emotional body. Take a deep breath. Imagine your emotions lifting towards peace and joy. And that might be hard if you've had a lot of emotional distress or you're in the middle of a, of a mental emotional cleanse or you're in the middle of a relationship break in or reflection, break up or reflection. Um, I, I think it's funny I, I didn't say break up, break in breaking in behind the doors of your emotions and stop pretending that everything is fine, it's working, you're breaking into the reality and dropping into the profound aspects of what you're experiencing. And honestly, we can go decades and not even get how on automatic we are. Our Achilles heel, we uh, just a reflexive behavior that is often very, very subconscious. So our best gauge of how we're doing with all this unattachment or stickiness is our emotional body. So let's imagine we see any heavy emotions melting away. Experience your nervous system and endocrine systems balancing. Our thoughts in our attachment for things going a certain way in our disappointment creates a nervous system cyclic pattern. Because if you don't let go at some point, every time something similar happens of a similar vibration, 
you're going to be catapulted into that reaction all the time until you're exhausted, until your endocrine system fails and becomes imbalanced, your thyroid becomes drained, your adrenals, they are, are so worn out. I actually can do the voice bio machine and, and I can calibrate just how a person's emotional body has drained their physical body. So we're very clear on mind body connection now. So today's topic, healing the emotional body, I think is pretty important, especially because we know that we're light workers and we're in this divine plan. And I daily encounter women who are discounted. They are discounted and marginalized for the truth that they believe and they see, and that is important for their sense of movement into authentic, true light worker courage and confidence. So this is a big, big topic, healing the emotional body. So what is the affirmation? The affirmation is my emotions are balanced and calm. I focus on appreciation and joy. So the answer is right there. The answer is right there. When you feel that you are in the conundrum of heaviness, a veil, if you're merging with other people's energy fields too much, and they're holding a low vibration of worry or disappointment, it's always the self-responsibility to what? It was right in that card. Choose to re-choose by focusing on what you want to experience. Now, the scientists, the neuroscientists say, Affirmations don't work because you're just pretending and you're putting a little saccharine layer. Oh, yes, I am happy and calm over this cauldron <laughs> of red rage, Mars energy, just waiting and seething out in little bits and sarcastic, passive aggressive comments to your loved ones or clients. So our emotional fields are very, very important to look at it, and it is the gift to humans. And I'm going to say something that has been said by many spiritual teachers. I'm not making it up. On our sweet little planet, it, it's a new planet. It's fairly, it's a juvenile planet, as you can tell, not real mature. It's not handled by real mature uh, human species yet. But Earth is the only place where you can feel emotions. Think of Spock on Star Trek. That's pretty much it. This is what we do. This is the truth. These are decisions. And it, we don't go into intense inflammatory uh, reaction. And the good news is there's love, there's passion, there's artistic, there's resistance, repulsion, uh, there's everything, it's the gamut. And I've heard that beings line up, they sign up on a waiting list to be born into earth to experience anguish, love, passion, flamenco dancing, joy, uh, off the scale, emotional experiences. So I hope you're having a lot of very, very positive emotional experiences, but let's address the disappointment list. Think of it as a clothesline that you've had your whole life of things that need to be hung out to dry and they need fresh air. Start thinking of the first time you were disappointed, first time you realized your parents weren't God. First time you realize you weren't going to get ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> it's different for everyone. Think about the first time you went to your friend's house and you saw maybe their mom was nicer than yours. Maybe they go out to dinner and you never got to go out to dinner. Think about the disappointment of not being chosen in elementary school or not making a good grade, disappointing your parents. Much of our script of what we are disappointed about 
is set by our parental patterning. But they were disappointed about most people living in America are pretty much built on the uh, American immigrant spirit. And so getting a roof over your head was the main big deal. And there was a scarcity mentality. So we're graduating from a lot of the old disappointment realms and checklist. But for myself and maybe for you as a light worker, you're waking up and you understand something better is possible and you're part of that possibility. But there is a disappointment for it actually being realized in a consistent, substantial manner and way expressing itself on the earth plane. It's hard to see, isn't it? We turn to Facebook or social media for inspiration. Inspiration we don't get from our own family and friends sometimes. Inspiration we don't get from ourselves because we are disappointed. So to really feel into the disappointment, the real disappointment, even if you've got a pretty good toolkit to turn it around and re-choose to focus on a different emotion, it's time to look at disappointment in a different way. Again, we've been raised for what? To be comfortable, to be safe, to do things a certain way in a certain timing in our lives. Right there, the standardization of expectations for human behavior, it sets us up for disappointment when we stray out of that. Right now, I'm feeling a little bit of disappointment that our, our person who who vacuums the carpets in our offices is vacuuming at nine in the morning and not in the middle of the night that he usually does. I hope there's a good reason. I hope he's a new grandfather that was up welcoming that new baby in. So I'm choosing to give it a pass and hopefully it's not too loud in your ears. So we can choose all the time what to be annoyed by and what to be disappointed about. And so you'll notice some days, something that would have disappointed or thrown you over doesn't bother you at all. Have you ever thought about why? Because you're feeling good about yourself. You're feeling good about life. And you have filled yourself to a certain level of okayness. Life is okay. That you can let the little dart that would usually pop your bubble bounce right off. So we're seeking, our goal here is a resilience. So one of the tools that I use is I choose to look at things differently. So I put these glasses on. These are actually uh, healing glasses because frequency and color heals. And everything in this room is orange now, so I'm delighting at the novelty of it. And I'm in a state of curiosity and I've become alive in the moment, alive, simply by looking at things differently. And I wouldn't have to put the glasses on. Another way you can look at things differently is if a person's annoying you, move your own consciousness out of yourself and imagine you're sitting in their body, in their seat, and seeing it from their perspective. So reframing what is happening and stopping and pausing before we ramp up our layer, our keg, our keg, gunpowder keg filled of uh, disappointment. Take a breath. Let your vagal, your natural vagal response relax by letting your belly go and taking a nice deep breath and shifting. When I say shift, it can be as simple as breathing, getting a glass of water, taking a walk. If you are sitting and feeling intense disappointment, 
You are freezing, freeze framing yourself. I'm not saying it, it, don't feel your feelings, feel them and reflect. Even that is shifting out of feeling and the angst. Choosing to reflect is very positive because you're releasing that ball of rubber bands in your stomach and you're saying, why am I experiencing this again? Is there a similar thing that happens for me over and over again? Am I attracting the same type of partner? Am I attracting no money in my bank? Where is my focus in my life that would allow this harmonic resonant pattern to happen when I actually know and I'm working with the principles that I create my reality. Do you see that big disconnect there? So there's disappointment. I'm even failing as a light worker. I'm failing in the 3D and I'm failing in the, as a light worker. And so I'm talking to light workers here that we have a mighty toolkit. And if we're constantly in 3D disappointment or disappointment, that 5D isn't happening sooner or we haven't stepped up, where is the shift? And that's what we're talking about. Look into things differently. So put on new lens. Try something new. Imagine that you're your higher self. And suddenly everything's in a different color. Everything makes sense. You have unconditional love, you have compassion. We make a shift when we get in that emotional, immobilized, this will never change. So we talked about a few ways, taking a deep breath, stimulating our vagal response, taking a walk, Imagine that you're sitting in the shoes of the annoying person who's still not doing what you want them to do. And why don't they get over it and change and just do and be what you want them to be. So everything I'm saying is pointing to one thing back to yourself and holding on to the reins of your energy field and don't let the horse the horses run wild and your emotions are often what runs everything. So if you're not holding the reins to your emotions, it's not that you're in victimhood. It means that you're being passive and you're allowing for the outside world to wrangle and move you around and say jump and you jump. So it does take quite a bit of self-reflection, monitoring, looking at patterns. We've done a lot of healing. I know a lot of you are doing a lot of deep, deep healing. So remember these simple tools and then stop thinking. Go into the meditation zone where guess what? Disappointment does not exist when you are in your heart and you are being your highest frequency. We do this every Wednesday morning. We're going to drop in in just a moment. But if we're grabbing the reins of our energy field and our emotions, if we don't know where we're going, we could end up anywhere. So every week we make an intention before we drop in and today's intention is to release reduce and let go of disappointment disappointment in people disappointment in places that we imagine would be more to our liking more affordable or smell nice or whatever all disappointment is based on your picture versus the reality and you put yourself in that disappointment unnecessarily you're wasting your energy on disappointment 
the major, major mental tool that you can use is, I already said it on the card, is to choose appreciation and joy because they are higher vibrations. Remember I said before, you can't just do an affirmation, you know, words, put it over and you have all this disappointment and it's bordering on depression rage. If your affirmation, if you are embodying it, for I'll give you an example. Say your partner does something really snarky and it's just like, oh my God, there's that pattern again. Find something stellar and golden to appreciate about your partner at that time that will make that one little quirky thing, which is obviously the, their way of feeling safe in the world and, and making things work for them. If it hasn't violated one of your boundaries, switch your focus from what has disappointed you with that beloved's behavior and feel your appreciation and love and respect for what a hard journey they have lived and you can feel somewhat compassionate that they are behaving in a way that you wouldn't choose but you must let them have their journey they will live out that trajectory until it's no longer serving them so choose appreciation because all low vibrations like disappointment sadness fear underneath disappointment usually am i in control all lower vibrations when around a higher vibration like appreciation the lower vibrations will be digested and dispersed and be reduced so there we go so when you're in the 3d there's a lot of different little check boxes i gave you right there to shift from disappointment to appreciation so let's drop in with this feeling of something that has freshly disappointed you. And again, it's not just this disappointment, it's, it's the varied layers of typical resonant related type of disappointments, which believe me, have been created and line up for you to witness because you hold the resonance that has invited them in we just say that is a fact it's nobody's fault nobody else is experiencing what you're experiencing exactly correct correct so let's take a breath in with all the love that we ourselves have created all these rules and scripts for how other people should behave why to make us feel safe to make us feel whole and centered and resourced. We have our rules, rules that we live by that we impress upon everyone and everything else. And that's the source of the disappointment. So let's take a deep breath through our nose and out through our mouth. And let's imagine Isis is here, specifically this divine feminine overarching archetype who her very name is the clue to why we called her in. Isis, I-S-I-S, -S -S. what is, is. The greatest adjudicators, the Hierophant, the high priestess, simply look at the play of energies and what has been created with no emotions and no judgment. So we ask for Isis to oversee and guide us so that we may allow everything in our lives just to be what it is. Other people and things, events. And learn to be appreciative and to be neutral and to observe with joy, with joy, with joy and a curiosity. Who would make a person do that? Who would make that waiter do that? 
What would make my child be that way or do that? And you begin to see this compassionate script roll out of the wise and you can generate love and acceptance from your heart and that you are not creating more of the problem by radiating judgment and disappointment on any field. This has many effects and one is to make you more welcome, more appreciated. People will feel more uh, safe in your presence, calmer, resources will flow to you, clients, people, partners, beloved, who feel. I'm going to ask someone to go ahead and be sure you're muted. Thank you. So let's take that deep breath with all of these thoughts and I can feel We've gone into a spiral now of the crux of the matter. Disappointment doesn't serve us. We ask and intend that through this very simple meditation that we repattern any proclivity, any reactivity, which is automatic to go to that disappointment bank that we recognize it immediately and back up and in complete divine compassionate neutrality choose a tool and then focus on appreciation mainly for our awakening consciousness to stop automatic behavior that is not serving us. So take this breath and feel how your heart and specifically your lungs that carry sadness, disappointment, stories, a lifetime of sadnesses. Open that up almost as if you're opening up your heart, you're, you're unfurling beautiful, beautiful tabernacle and that your heart and your lungs are open and in this moment feel trusting and safe to reveal the layers, the scarring, the band-aids, the tears, the repression. We call in our spirit guides to support us and we begin house cleaning vibrationally we open our crown chakra and we ask that the light of the creator very gently begin to warmly move into our crown chakra and this very high octane energy is being absorbed in our brain within our eyes and the orbits and the eyelids throughout our head, nose, lips, chin, and our throats. We ask and intend that all the times we've been disappoint, disappointed and held back our own words of communicating our feelings, we ask that we release a lifetime of sadness in not feeling safe to speak our truth. We feel that this is a, a spinning out, almost like a top. We're letting the entire thread be pulled. And now the thread is pulled out. So that everything is free and unbound within the throat chakra. We let this beloved energy come into our shoulders. We ask and intend that that heavy yoke of what we carried of how we should be that wasn't really ours at all, 
that made us so disappointed in ourselves, we let that wooden yoke go and we put it in a beautiful fire in the hearth, the fireplace, right where it needs to go, burn up, incinerate, so that your shoulders are free without that weightiness, without that sense of strong, strict, I must be this. And that was a major cause of disappointment. I should be this by this age. I should be thinner. I should make more money. I should be a better blah, blah. All the shoulds are now in the fireplace making a beautiful smoke that it just smells so wonderful. It's because it's this wonderful smelling wood. So let it go. It's all good. Now let all that tension off your arms down to your fingertips of efforting, efforting, so you won't have to feel disappointment. And now the most important part, we let this light of the creator, and this is so gentle, go into our lung tissues and very gently, etherically pull out, the word I'm getting is like boogers, congested, gooey energy stoppages from all the insults of people telling you things that made you disappointed in yourself and all these projections that you have had being disappointed in other people with your picture in your mind of something perfect that should have but didn't happen. All of this, the little granules that cause excoriation of the tissues every time there's a similar situation and it feels ignited. We ask and attend that these slivers of slights insults and disappointments are moving out and away from the lung tissue now we invite fresh new energy to come in replace and recolor all aspects of the lungs the bronchial tubes the trachea the larynx we ask that a new freshness and flow, a sense of light, levity. Take a deep breath and feel as if these balloons have no pressure, that they just open and receive this new quickening, like energy just moving through sparkles of light. And this beautiful new fluid and light is replacing the old multi-layered slate of disappointments in your life to create a new space of apprehension for good. Where we had apprehension for, we had anxiety for less than perfect outcomes based on our contractual, constant judging and measuring. We're creating a new resilience and flexibility and space in our lungs for something right, something good. And by creating this resonance, the good, the right out in the world, We'll say that's a match. Allow yourself to be the match for something good. Breathe into your lungs the match for love. Bring in the match for people you can trust. Bring in the match for people in integrity. Would never think of disappointing you. Now take the deep breath now of your lungs, creating a whole new pattern, mosaic pattern. 
where you are safe and you are in, experience such a deep sense of peace and you are so full of this peace that anything anybody else does bounces off. It doesn't get into your lungs ever again. So you are safe, healed. Now let your heart, which has taken some hits over the years, take a deep breath and let this receive this oxygenated pure flow of safety and peace and joy. Just breathe it in and you don't have to know how it's working, it's just happening. Breathe it in now and let it go into all of your arteries and now down into the capillaries. The exchange at the cellular level. Life is good. Good things come my way. All is well. So let this new ringing bell of trust and peace and receiving and flowing love out fill every little particle of your being. So now your physical body, your physical response apparatus is matching your divine self. So it wasn't very far away at all because you always knew how good you could feel. And today we're weaving the two bodies together and remember lower vibrations match the higher vibrations. So we are becoming one. Our emotional body is set to our divine body, which says everything is always okay in every minute. And there's a story why things might appear unaligned. Everybody's on their journey and not everybody's there yet on earth, but I'm there with myself. I am choosing to be my divine being. I am choosing for my emotions to ring out in a heavenly vibration where I feel calm and happy and curious to what is happening around me and noticing people's patterns and cycles with almost a, just a, the humor and love of a mother who's been there and done that. So as we come out of this meditation, you may want to move your feet, move your hands a little bit, move around, because it's real. Feel it in your physical body. Squeeze your legs. Paramahansa Yogananda bounces on his head, or used to bounce on his head with his knuckles. <laughs> Knucklehead. <laughs> feel it. Feel how joyful it is to be alive and to be a master of your experience. And if the emotional field is the Achilles heel for human existence, you just chose to master it. You just chose to hold your field in its divinity. It's all good. So thanks for joining me today. I am Jan Jorkinson at Sound and Light Healing Arts.